Hey everyone, welcome to Becca's True Crime Corner. I'm Becca, and if you are a crime addict like me, I do a lot of unsolved, solved, and missing persons cases. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. I post once a week, and hopefully in the future, I'll be able to post a little bit more. But for now, I make sure to do at least once a week. All right, guys, we're gonna hop into today's case. And I just want to give a disclaimer that this case is completely frustrating and very heartbreaking for the family and the victim. A lot of this feels like it did not have to happen. And if certain protocols or morals were put into place, this might not have happened. With that being said, today's case is the Anaya Blanchard case. Anaya was born on June 22nd, 2000, and she actually shares her birthday with her mom, Angela Harris. Her father is Elijah Blanchard, and her stepfather is actually a professional UFC fighter named Walt Harris. Anaya is originally from Homewood, Alabama, which is a suburb in Birmingham. She is 19 years old and currently in college at Southern Union State Community College. She played softball in high school, but was planning on continuing it, just wasn't completely sure yet in college. She was going in for her basic courses because she wasn't sure 100% on what she wanted to do full time. So she just went in and did her core classes, but she knew she wanted to focus on art, education, or even maybe business. She was described to have a heart of gold. She was also described to be very giving, kind. She was the type of person who would give the shirt off her back for you, even if you were a stranger. She was a very nurturing soul and just wanted everybody to be happy. On October 23rd, 2019 in Auburn, Alabama, Anaya was hanging out with her mom, her stepdad, and her brother, and she decided she was tired and she wanted to take her brother home and then go home herself. After dropping her brother off at his place, she went to the Chevron convenience store, which was right on the street from her apartment. Her mother said that she was a snacker and she loved to just grab a few snacks and have something to snack on right before she goes to bed. When her brother left her, he had said that her phone was actually dying, but they weren't concerned because she was heading straight home anyways. Anaya had texted a friend right before midnight, although I am not sure what that text message said. It was not written anywhere for me to find out. And later that night, her roommate had messaged her on Snapchat and she had told her roommate that she was out with a young man. And I'm pretty sure that his name was listed, but they're not releasing that right now. The roommate had then responded to her. I wish you had let me know. I waited up for you. I'm going to bed. I love you. Good night at which Anaya responded and said, I'm sorry, I love you too. But this was completely out of character for Anaya. She wasn't one to just go running off in the middle of the night with a strange young man. So interest was peaked even in this moment. When she left her parents' house that night, she had talked about how tired she was and her stepdad actually suggested that her brother drive her home since she was so tired so that she didn't risk falling asleep at the wheel. And she had said, no, I'm fine. I'm gonna get him home and then I'll get home and just go to sleep. So her being out with a young man later on in the night just doesn't completely make sense. And then shortly before midnight on the 24th is when Anaya's mother said that her phone just went completely dark. And of course this sent alarms through everybody. Nobody knew where she was. Nobody had any contact with her for a while. So they went ahead and reported her on October 24th as a missing person. Then on October 26th, her car was found. It was a 2007 Honda CRV, and it was found in a Montgomery apartment complex, which was 55 miles from where she was last seen. The car had quite a bit of damage on the passenger side. It had dents and scrapes and scratches all along like the panel side of it, all the way into the passenger's door. The police also stated that there was so much blood evidence in the car that they declared it was a crime scene. And with the amount of blood that was in the car, it was definitely a life-threatening injury, which on October 31st, they had came out and said that she was probably a victim of foul play. On November 26, the police released a photo of a man in the store at the same time as Anaya, 
when she was in the Chevron convenience store, there was a man there. He was wearing a camo uh, sweatshirt that said Vans on the back. It was seen on the cameras from the convenience store. So they released that and asked people to help identify this person. November 7th, the man is identified as 29 year old Ibrahim Yazid of Montgomery, Alabama. He is then wanted on a charge of first degree kidnapping. And from here, it's kind of a snowball effect that we still don't completely understand, but I'm gonna give you all of the information that I have from here. And on November 22nd, the second suspect was arrested and it was 35 year old Antoine Shamar Fisher. He was arrested for disposing of evidence and providing a vehicle. My understanding would be that he somehow helped Yazid with Anaya's body and then also probably provided him a vehicle to get back and forth. On November 25th, there were remains found in Shorter, Alabama, which is 25 miles from Montgomery. And also on November 25th, there's a third suspect that is arrested. David Johnson Jr. is the third suspect arrested and he's arrested for hindering prosecution by lying to the police officers about his son driving Yazid to Florida to get away when they put a warrant out for his arrest. And he full well knew that he had a warrant out for his arrest, but proceeded to have his son drive him to Florida anyways. On November 27th, unfortunately, it was confirmed that the remains that were found in the wooded area in Shorter, Alabama were Anaya's. The autopsy showed that she was shot to death. And y'all, this is where the story starts to get very infuriating on my part. And I'm sure if it bothers me the way it does, it's gonna bother all of you the same way too. But this is where we really dive into where things just went completely wrong. So a witness later came forward and said that he saw Yazid talking to Anaya at the store, the convenience store she was at. He saw him and Anaya talking and then he later saw what looked like him forcing her into the car and taking her against her will. This man didn't come forward sooner because his wife had told him to stay out of it. Another witness saw Yazid in just shorts, no t-shirt, with a gun tucked into his shorts. And he was actually in Anaya's car, but Anaya was nowhere to be found. He also told the same friend that he had shot a girl and that she went after his gun. So come to find out, Yazid had a mile long rap sheet and I just wanna go over with you guys really quick what was on his rap sheet. So Yazid had a mile long rap sheet. This guy got away with a lot in the past and never really served a whole lot of time. But I'm gonna go over those with you guys right now. In 2011, Yazid was charged with two counts of first degree robbery. Those charges were dismissed by a grand jury. In 2012, he was also arrested again for attempted murder of trying to hit two police officers. Those charges as well were dropped due to a grand jury. In 2013, he was charged with possession of marijuana, crack cocaine, a pistol without a permit, drug paraphernalia, and attempting to get away from police on two separate occasions. In 2015, he was found guilty. He was supposed to serve two separate 13 month sentences, but for some reason they were suspended and he never served any time. In 2017, he was charged with aggravated assault, battery of a police officer, possession of marijuana and fleeing police. He unfortunately was found not guilty for the battery and assault charges. In 2018, the judge sentenced him to serve 18 months in prison, but he was released shortly after because he did eight months prior while he was waiting for his trial, which counted towards that time. In January, 2019, he was charged with two counts of kidnapping, two counts of robbery and attempted murder, as well as possession of marijuana. These charges were brought upon him for trying to rob and then brutally beat two men in a hotel room. One of the men was nearly beaten to death. And the day he was arrested, Yazid was released on bond. You guys, this guy's crime was in January of 2019 and Anaya was kidnapped and murdered October of 2019. If this man was not out on bond, she would still be alive today. 
they will definitely be seeking the death penalty in this case and it is a capital murder charge for Yazid. Unfortunately in this situation Anaya's kindness was more than likely taken advantage of. It was said that she was such a sweet and giving person that good chances are he might have just gone up to her at the gas station, asked her for help with something and she was such a nice person that she spoke back to him and you know, whereas some, some of us women later at night at a gas station might brush it off and be like, don't talk to me. She was such a sweet and caring and giving person and there was absolutely nothing wrong with that. And he took complete advantage of that. Her mother stated in an interview, which by the way, it is just heartbreaking to watch her mom in these interviews. My heart just completely breaks for her, especially as a mother. I can't imagine what this was like going through for her and no mother should ever have to experience this kind of pain. And she had said she felt like maybe there was something more that she could have taught her daughter where she didn't feel like she lived in a world that was that unsafe where she would have to teach her daughter how to protect herself and not to talk to people late at night at a gas station as an adult because unfortunately some people do evil things. And I would never ever blame her mom ever for this situation or tell her that she could have you know she could have taught her so much more and she's still a kind person that doesn't mean she wouldn't have still done the kind thing because you know just nice people do that but she did say in an interview and it kind of just sat with me that she felt like she could have taught her more how to better protect herself in that type of situation anaya really did just cross paths with the wrong person that night and it's so unfortunate when that happens i mean any murder case it's so unfortunate but just to simply stop in a gas station on your way home to grab a few snacks before you go to bed just no reason why this should have happened to her no reason it really is just a matter of crossing paths with the wrong person at the wrong time a part of me too just wonders if at the time he just thought i have nothing to lose i'm probably going to jail for these other charges i'm out on bond right now why not and it's unfortunate because those charges that he had on him previously were very heavy and if convicted he was going to be serving a lot of time for an attempted murder charge not like his other small charges where he barely served any time and a part of me wonders if he felt like because of that what did he have to lose why not take this beautiful young girl that he wanted for himself it's just so sad to think that her life could have been saved if this man was not out on bond if he was in jail where he belonged this would have never happened and then my final point if you see something say something i can't explain to you how infuriating it was for me to find an article that said there was a man who witnessed her being kidnapped and did not do anything i'm not even sure why he discussed it with his wife that wouldn't even be a thought to me i wouldn't even think to call my husband in a situation like that if i witnessed something like that my immediate thought would be call 911. i don't i don't even think it would be a thought it would just be an instant 911 because what happens if you're wrong you don't get in trouble you don't nothing happens to you call if you ever have a gut feeling that you just witnessed something that doesn't seem normal and seems off do something say something the worst that can happen is you were wrong the best that could happen is a life could be saved and i hate to say this because i don't want to pass blame on anybody else or make anybody feel any more guilty than they already do because i did read in an article that this person does feel remorse and guilt for not calling but the honest truth is he may have been able to save her life that night right away anaya's family knew that they had to do something in her honor they had to do something that was going to protect other families from going through the hurt and the pain that they went through so they came up with Anaya's law. It's a bail reform law. This law is meant to give a judge the opportunity to deny bail for a class A felony, which are most of the charges that Yazid was charged with beforehand. And unfortunately in the state of Alabama, you cannot deny bail for anybody who hasn't been charged with capital murder. So basically, the highest offense is the only way you can deny bail and in this case once again if he could have been denied bail and was in prison 
this would have never happened. So they are fighting to pass this law so that something positive can come from this. Something positive can come in her name and in her honor. They had said so much about how she was so loving and caring and giving. And, you know, even her father said that he would be proud of what they're doing and she would be proud to have this in her name. And she would be proud to know that her name is helping stopping this from happening to anybody else. And of course her family does not wish this on anybody. They don't want any other family to have to go through what they went through. And I can only imagine how unbelievably frustrating all of this was when all of it started panning out. I mean, I don't even know her and my heart breaks for her and her family. I don't even know her and it is incredibly frustrating to know that this man was out on bond for attempted murder when he kidnapped her and murdered her. I mean, it's just, it's insane. She was not protected by the law at all. And like I said, it was wrong place, wrong time. There's, there's nothing. She couldn't have done anything to protect herself better. All she simply did was go to a gas station to pick up some snacks and wanted to go home and go to sleep. She didn't put herself in a situation that was unsafe. All that happened was she came across a path of an evil person. Leave me a comment down below and let me know how you feel about this case and let me know how you feel about this new law in Anaya's name. All right guys, that is it for Anaya's story today. I will give you guys updates as they come in because he will be going to court very soon and I'm sure a lot of things will come out, more things will come out on you know what really truly happened and if anybody else was involved or anything like that. And of course, whatever they finally decide and let's hope it's the death penalty. But I will do an update on this case as soon as updates come along. All right, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.